Hey guys, it's Mike from Mike Stickers here. Um, I'm going to talk to you all about the GraphTech cutter. I have a follower that's, um, or he's one of my subscribers on YouTube. It's, um, I don't know if he wants me to mention his name on here or his company or whatever. But anyways, he reached out to me today and he said that he just got himself a GraphTech 9000 54 inch. He's having difficulty with perf cutting. He's asked me what sort of settings I recommend. He says he has a 45 degree blade and that he's cutting with a six mil or he says he's cutting six mil stickers. So, um, I responded back. I let him know, Hey, um, you definitely got to be using a 60 degree blade. Uh, I recommend using a second holder for it. And that's because if you're going to be swapping out doing perf cut and contour cuts, it's best to just leave it set up in that holder and just swap the holder. That way you don't have to change the blade depth every time and get that set. So you can just leave it the way it is and just swap out the holder itself. Um, the little $15 kit that comes on Amazon that you can get on Amazon, that kit works just fine. And um, this is what I'm talking about. This is the one that came with it here. And that's the one I like to use for my um, perf cuts because I put the 60 degree blade one in this holder because I use a blue cut line from a perf cut. So it just is easy for me to remember that that's the 60 degree blade. And then I use this other one that I got off of Amazon. I put my 45 degree blade in that, the silver one. And um, so I just swap it out. When you do perf cuts, it has to be on the front on this furthest out position contour cuts it goes or kiss cuts it goes on the inside position i was just doing one this morning a kiss cut but i don't normally do that there's some issues i'm having with that i haven't mastered it yet so um you know if y'all can help me out on that that'd be great but i'm having issues where it's leaving little small thin cuts or scratches on top from where it's moving over the material to go to like an inside cut or go to the next cut it's dragging along the material at certain points and leaving a, a, a visible scratch or a real thin cut in it and i'm not sure how to prevent that maybe i have the blade depth too much maybe i need to change some other internal settings so i'm not sure but for what i'm telling you right now uh on the perf cuts it pretty much I'm, I'm satisfied with it every now and then i might see some mark like that on there and i'll just discard that one sticker i always usually make a few extra stickers just in case so um anyways and then he responded back after i gave him these first uh, set of answers and said uh that he actually got a 60 degree blade today and then asked me how thick a material i'm cutting and and all that sort of stuff um and what sort of force settings I'm using. So I'll tell you right now, so I have it on. Okay, this is, um, so you got to read the dark portion there. This is condition three is what I'm using. It's the presetting for it. I might have adjusted it some. I, I, I know I did. Uh, I think it comes normally set with uh, the speed of 20. I use speed, sorry, it comes with speed 30. I slowed it down to speed 20 because I wanted more accuracy. Um, for me, it cuts plenty fast at speed 20, so it's not a big deal, but I, I think you could probably speed it up if you wanted to. I use force of 31, and I believe A2 is the, the cut pattern. I might be mistaken. I forget right now, but I believe that's the type of cut pattern that it's using. And so I use that for my, my perf cuts. And um, once I, I, I put it to that, I've never had to change it. To anything else that's just what i'm using i've been happy with it like i said i'm sure you could speed it up some but i haven't felt the need to anyway so um the other thing is that when you set the blade depth i don't have any way to actually show you all that on camera i don't think like i said i'm doing perf cuts with this this blade actually is extending extending out what i think is probably kind of a lot but compared to what most people would would think um let me see if i could actually yeah i don't think you're going to be able to see it on here it's sticking out slightly from the end of there it's not easy to see but it's sticking out slightly but the thing is is with your graph tech it comes with this little tool here tool here what you do is you drop the the blade holder down in there it's a little like a little sight eye thing 
Um, you put it in there. You drop it in there, basically. You look through here. I don't think you're going to be able to see anything on camera. It's all dusty, actually. I need to cover this. But uh, when you look in there, you're going to be able to see it magnifies the blade tip. And it puts, I'm not going to say like crosshairs, but it look, puts little hash marks across it. And it gives you the ability to see how far it's sticking out. And um, let me see. I'm going to I'm gonna take a look and kind of see if I can describe it for you. So give me a second. All right, guys. So this is kind of what it's going to look like um, when you're looking through that little magnifier thing. The curved section is going to be the tip of the blade. Sorry, the tip of the holder. The line coming straight out of the curve is going to be the tip of the blade. The hash marks that are vertical going up and down is the scale marks that are inside the little magnifying glass. So you have three long hash marks and then you have four smaller ones in between it. My blade is going out about the distance that I'm representing here. It's going out about, I would say, slightly more than three quarters of the distance. It looks like it's sticking way out in here, but like I said, keep in mind, it's basically like looking at it through a microscope. But that's what that little side eye is for, so you can actually really dial it in. And that's how far I have it sticking out to successfully make perf cuts. Like I said, I'm not telling y'all that this is the exact right way to do it. I'm just telling you that's how I do it. And so, like I said, you clearly can't see it sticking out all that far, but under a microscope, that's what it looks like. So, um, there's not really much else to it. Um, the other question I said that this gentleman asked me was how thick a material I'm cutting through. Like I've said, I'm, I'm using substance laminate and substance print media. Both of the ones that I'm using, they make different thicknesses. So it depends on which one you get. But both of the ones that I'm using are 2.75 mils thick. I believe that that's just the, the material itself without the backing paper. So total is going to be 5.5 mils. Not quite as thick as the 6 mil that this gentleman was telling me he's cutting. But I don't know if people are always considering the uh, the backing paper when they say that. Because, the you know, the backing paper, if you're doing kiss cutting, you're not going to be cutting through it. If you're going to be doing perf cutting, you're cutting through it. Um, all the specs are, ava are available on Substance. And I've told you all what I'm using. It's the, I don't want to misquote it again. Um, I don't think. I don't know if they have them on these big long boxes or not. They might. I don't remember if it says it here. Sorry, my garage is a mess right now. We've been going through some ice storm over here and everything. So, okay, so this is the print media is PM2755. It says it's 2.7 mile uh, mil thick. I believe that's not counting the uh, the backing paper. So you'd have to look and see. But I mean, like I said, this is the settings I'm using for this. Um, I don't really try to calculate it by how many mils it is. I just test it out until I'm happy with how it's cutting. So this is PL3150. This is my laminate. And it's also 2.75 mil thick. So that's the stuff that I'm currently using. And that's the stuff I'm always going to be using unless I change up to some of their other products some of substance other products always going to be using substance it's the best that's all i use um anyways i think that's it for this one uh, i've got another video showing how to kind of do perf cut or sorry kiss cutting as well that that one's going to be coming out soon but i haven't mastered that so like i said if y'all want to play around and maybe help me figure out how to do that better i'd appreciate it but I was in the middle of a big order and I messed up a whole bunch of stickers because the way it was doing what I was telling you was dragging the blade across and kind of scoring the top of the stickers and it wasn't looking good at all. So it's a lot less noticeable with matte laminate, but with the gloss laminate, it, it stands out. The light hits every one of those little cuts or scratches and it reflects the light so you can see it real easily. So. Sorry, I don't have much else to show y'all right now. I've been knocking out orders. Uh, we are dealing with an ice storm over here um, in Texas. 
believe it or not, and it shut me down for a while. The one thing that I guess I can tell you all about that I didn't know for sure when I was looking into these printers, the Roland BN20A, everyone, everything I saw, I, you know, people were either saying or I was reading that they don't like temperature fluctuations. They don't like cold temperatures. They don't like hot temperatures. But no one ever said that they just flat out will not work. So nothing bad with the design, but I'll tell you all flat out right now. So there's no mixed messages about it because I didn't know this information. It's not a not a big deal. Um, you just have to plan for it and know what to do. But I believe and don't quote me because I might be wrong, but I believe there's an internal heater inside of it. It only heats at a certain amount so that and this is like I said, this is all conjecture on my part it's all theoretical on my part but from using the machine what it seems like is that there's an internal heater that has to heat it up at least a certain amount so that the eco that the eco solvent ink will actually adhere to the vinyl and it takes longer to start up printing at different times i've noticed sometimes it'll take 15 minutes before it even starts printing you know you press print on the computer it sends the signal and it could still take 15 minutes before the machine seems like it wakes up and starts doing anything. And um, that's because it has to wait for the internal temperature to be high enough. And so it's been freezing cold. This shop of mine, it is insulated, but it's, you know, I don't have true air conditioning and heating. Um, but right here, I have my thermometer and barometer and all that um hyd hydrometer or whatever it is and um you can see that right now it's about 65 degrees if it gets down i'd say below 60 degrees this printer will not turn on sorry about all my mess in here i've been almost living out here it seems like but um yep it will not print if it's below a certain temperature i have this big old heater going which heats up pretty good it's not perfect but it's got a lot of heat coming off of it right now it's 1800 watts blasting full blast all the time there is no um on or i mean the no you know medium or low or anything like that it's just full blast all the time and even with that going if it gets below 60 in here or even i think right at 60 even it has hard time so I think it needs to be maybe even like 65 or more in here before this thing will want to even kick on and start working. So just keep that in mind. If you're in an area where it gets really, really cold, um, you're going to have problems with it printing. So it's just something to know about and plan for it. If this were to go on too much longer, I would have uh, taken over one of my daughter's rooms and put it up there probably. You know, we had to do what I had to do. But um, anyways... I've just been plugging along right now. Um, things were slow for a while. Had a, I was sick for a while. Had a storm. But um, some orders starting to come back through. Um, I was selling some stickers on Facebook Marketplace, but I got kicked off of there. I got banned from Marketplace for some reason. I don't know. Some hater reported me saying I, I was doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing, when which would have been a lie, but... Um, I think I've seen stuff in the past of people claiming copyright infringement, which I don't really make my own designs for the most part. I'm just using other people's that they give me to make for them. So someone might have seen a design I made for a company or something and claimed that it was copyright infringement. I'm not sure. But, you know, I might it might have been because they're commercial sales and I wasn't supposed to be doing commercial sales. But I, I actually I didn't see anything like that in their in their rules. So I bought some ad time on Facebook and I'm trying to uh, to use that right now to get some more orders coming through. But orders have been, you know, trickling through. Um, I believe any any business is going to slow down some during the holidays and it takes a little bit to speed all back up. But at the same time, I was sick and had stuff going on here. So I'm kind of glad that the orders weren't flooding in. 
but I do need them too now. I need to have a bunch of orders coming in so I can catch up after the holidays and spend a bunch of money on Christmas and stuff like that. So I need to get caught back up. Um, you know, I'm in a little, little bit of a financial hole right now. Not a big deal. Um, but, you know, I need to pay off, you know, a credit card so that I can get back to where I want to be and feel more comfortable. But not a big deal. I'm not someone that has a whole lot of debt like like some people. So, um Anyways, if y'all have any questions, anything I'll help you with, just give me a holler. Uh, if you're new to the channel and this is the first video you're seeing, uh, I've got the Roland BN20A. I've got the Graftech CE7000. It's the 24-inch one. And then I've got the Epson Colorworks C6500AU label printer. Oops, I forgot to turn this one back on after the storm. You're supposed to leave these things on all the time so they can self-clean and all that. I forgot to. I actually I swapped out the cable. Um, I had the cord plugged into a different one so I could have backup power on it in case the power went out. And I forgot to plug it back in afterwards. So, or I forgot to turn it back on after I swapped the plug around. So, anyways... Um, Someone actually, and honestly, I forgot to respond to someone. Someone asked me what brand rewinder this was. I, I don't even know. It's off of Amazon. It's some cheap company. I'd have to look here. It says uh, Kirkan, and the model is KR500U. Just made in China. It's not anything special. It has gotten the job done, definitely, but it struggles at times. If you're putting too many labels on one roll, it it definitely has problems it'll start to slip on you and um i definitely want to upgrade that before i start getting too many more uh you know label orders but um it's it's done good for what it is it was 300 dollars i think and the next upgrade that i need the one i need to get is like 800 so i mean at the time it was a big deal because this machine was already like four thousand dollars with the tax and everything so Anyways, if y'all have questions about any of this sort of equipment here that I'm operating, that I'm familiar with, just let me know and I'll help you out. All right, thanks for watching, subscribing, liking, sharing, reaching out to me. I appreciate all the love, guys. Anytime y'all send me a message or letter or email or whatever, um, it gives me more motivation to keep going. So I really appreciate it, guys. Y'all take it easy.